Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we've gotten a lot of great feedback on the exhibit booths. Uh, there's a lot of terrific info available for you there. So I'm glad you were able to take advantage of all of that. This next session uh, is uh, maybe one of my favorites um, because it is as practical as it gets. Uh, it is called How to Invest in Digital Assets in Your Retirement Account. And I'm very happy to welcome uh, to this session Ryan Radloff. He is the CEO of Choice by Kingdom Trust. How are you doing, Ryan? Hey, Rick. Doing well. Glad to be here. Uh, prior to joining Choice as the CEO, Ryan was the co-founder and CEO of CoinShares, which you may be familiar with, $4 billion in assets globally. Um, so, uh, Ryan, let, let's just you know, make this really easy. Um, tell us about Choice um, and what it is that you do, because I think a lot of advisors are going to be surprised. Sure. Well, so Choice is, is our product. It's, it's an app that enables uh, advisors and individuals to buy digital assets out of qualified retirement accounts. Uh, for the advisors, it helps advisors manage their clients and do it in their retirement accounts. For individuals, it helps them access it uh, directly out of their self-directed accounts. So what we're really aiming to build, our mission is to build the next generation's Charles Schwab, uh, where there's this seamless integration between this new world of digital assets, as well as the legacy assets. Uh, and that's what we're doing today. From one account, you can buy stocks, ETFs, crypto, uh, you can hold your own keys and you can uh, earn interest on crypto uh, and, and park it at different places. Talk about that a bit more. So that's what we are and that's, that's what choice is. Now, the, so you can, you, know, you can buy digital assets inside of an IRA. And it's, you know, we talked earlier with uh, Invesco and mm -hmm. uh, Pythagoras and Osprey they allow you, of course, to also uh, hold their products inside IRAs, but they're, uh, they're funds. Um, you're not a fund. You're, you're mm -hmm. talking about the direct assets. I mean, yeah, you can buy ETFs through uh, choice, um, but you can own Bitcoin directly, Ethereum directly, dozens and dozens of coins, just like dozens and dozens of stocks, hundreds of stocks. Um, and you can do it inside of an IRA. Now, you can, you can also buy Bitcoin directly from Coinbase. Mm -hmm. The difference here is that an advisor can't help a client buy Bitcoin at Coinbase. If you go to Coinbase, you're going to open the account as the individual. What you allow is for the advisor to facilitate this so that the advisor can manage the account, open the account, facilitate it on behalf of the client, in fact, your entire book of clients. Right. You know, if you look at this, the landscape right now, is, as, as every, folks are seeing today, one of the problems here that, that advisors have is that uh, you know, the Coinbase's, the Kraken's, the big exchanges in the world aren't offering the qualified custody service to RIAs, which makes it difficult for them to keep charging uh, the assets under advisory and assets under management uh, fees uh, that advisors uh, currently have. The, the licensing that we provide enables that to happen. And then likewise, the, the larger, the old incumbents, custodians, uh, like the Schwabs and Fidelities, don't, don't enable the same operability of the digital assets that we, that we do. So what we've done is we've enabled digital assets to be handled just like ETFs or stocks uh, for advisors, all done through a custodian and through an app called Choice so that you get the same thing that you get from one of the legacy custodians in terms of being able to retain client fees, but also not lose any flexibility in the type of assets that you want to move clients into, which is a big deal. So I think what we've seen emerge in the industry really is two things. You've got the direct offering like choice now, as well as these separately managed accounts. Both are good options. And we're, if you're a Bitcoin enthusiast like myself that thinks of advancing the industry first, uh, it's exciting. But one of, the, one of the options, just choice, gives uh, operability and, and the back office to handle all of these different assets as if they were, they were handling it via Schwab or Fidelity or as easy as the Coinbase's and Kraken's on the exchanges. So disclosure, I'm uh, not only a uh, count holder uh, with Choice, uh, with, with Kingdom Trust, um, well, for my own IRA, but uh, my wife, Jean, and I are investors uh, in Kingdom Trust as well. Uh, Kingdom Trust is not a household name, Ryan. Um, most folks have never heard of you, uh, and yet you're managing how much money now in total AUM? It's close to 20, 20 billion. It fluctuates a lot as the uh, as the, <laughs> the Bitcoin prices go up and down. Uh, 
but um, but yeah, it's you're you're right. But it's 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 close to twenty billion now. And and by the way, we were joking prior to this session that uh, Ryan is either going to get the credit for being here today and causing Bitcoin to reach an all time high <laughs> as we perform this exact uh, presentation for you, or he will be blamed for having uh, caused the all time high and we'll never see it again. So <laughs> Ryan, I don't you know, time will tell whether you get the credit or the criticism. We'll see. Um, so. What it comes down to is that advisors, you know, I, I spend so much time in the crypto community and, and what I discover is that there are a lot of companies that are really creating nifty products and services. And we've profiled many today who are all doing exactly that, which is why they've gone through our uh, uh, filtering process to decide who to, who to present to advisors. Um, but what I often discover is that although the products are pretty nifty, uh, the services are nifty, they aren't really solving uh, direct problems that advisors have. Uh, and one of the key elements that advisors care about is practice management. It's not the crypto conversation. I mean, advisors are increasingly you know, getting it. We, we understand, yeah, I, there's a there there. It ain't going away. I need to allocate some of my client's portfolio to this. Um, but how do I do this within my practice? How can I, on a bulk basis for my entire book, open accounts for clients, do the trades, handle rebalancing, do the portfolio reporting, and oh, hey, let's not forget the most important thing, how do I get paid? Mm -hmm. How do I collect my fee? So that's one of the key uh, attributes that you have, you know, cracked that nut, you figured that out at Kingdom Trust. Yeah. And it, what was interesting is how it, it's like, there's these different solutions out there, but none of them solve those things. And that was kind of what, what the feedback I got from our clients and the story of how we figured this out is we'd actually been holding alternative assets for advisors for almost 10 years. And these were things like gold, you know, real estate, alternative assets. Then all of a sudden with the popularity of Bitcoin, that became center stage for us. And one of the problems is, you know, advisors either have to go and sign up a prospectus and do a separately managed account and have this whole deal over here, or you have to have, a, you know, deal outside of the confines of qualified custodian capacity, uh, where you don't have all the flexibility of rebalancing and open up mass accounts and things like that. So what we, what we just sought after do and the problem that we're solving is what you just said, where we enable the advisor to handle digital assets all through their front office and back office as easy as stocks. And we do that because we're a qualified custodian, we're able to do that and have the mobile friendly interface that enables you to see what's going on very easily from one fingertips, rebalance, integration to Orion, the full gauntlet that you'd expect nowadays from your custodian. So we just are taking a digital, a digital lead on that. The easy stuff really is the stocks and bonds, actually, when you think about it. So, so walk us through the process. Uh, how does an advisor assist a client in opening an account with choice? So what happens is in the same way that you have LP or Schwab or whatever you're connected to today, what you're actually doing is you're adding, think of it as like an alternative asset custodian bolt-on to your current practice, where if you have clients that are interested in alternative assets or even our stocks and ETFs on the platform, you create an account at choice for your client. It takes about two minutes. You have visibility of the account. You can trade any way you want for that client, rebalance, et cetera. Uh, and your client can have a login if you so choose, or you can direct them back to your, to your website. So what you're really doing is you're adding us as a custodian to your firm. Then you can open up as many uh, accounts, uh, IRAs or uh, custodial accounts as you'd like. And what we do is we, we plug in what your fees are as you onboard with us. And it just sweeps every month, just like or every quarter, just like you get at one of the other custodians. Uh, the difference is you've got a very large array of choices uh, for what types of assets that you can invest in for your clients. You're not restricted anymore uh, of, of whether it's digital assets, securities, or, uh, or anything like that. So block trading is available? Block trading, also integration back into your uh, uh, systems like Orion, uh, you bet. And... Um... Where are you customing the assets? So what we do is we provide the regulated custodial infrastructure and interface. What we actually do is we 
uh, the back end, have a sub custody relationship with Fidelity, who handles all of our Fidelity Digital, who handles our, our Bitcoin custody, and the Nomura back solution, which is called Kamenu for everything else, since Fidelity is just doing Bitcoin uh, today. So what that does is, is when your clients ask you, well, okay, how is my Bitcoin stored? The answer is Fidelity Digital. And you know, it, it, it cuts through a lot of the confusion uh, and the, the concerns around where, what's the best practice in security today? Because you know the name of Fidelity holds weight. It, they, they've done the analysis, they've built the in, institutional rails and we're leveraging that for advisors to build that uh, solution that they need in order to retain assets and give their clients exposure to digital assets. Um, so is this exclusively uh, IRAs? It's, it's, I mean, what, what's, no, it's not, but 80, you know, 80% of what we're seeing open are, are, are the qualified accounts, uh, mainly because that's just the flow that we're seeing, but no, you can open up custodial accounts just as easy, uh, which are non what we call non-qualified accounts. So right. either or, I mean, it, it's, I think the best practice is to always open up, you know, it requires no more paperwork to open up both of them at the same time. So you can knock out your qualified account for your clients and your non-qualified, and you can even rebalance and trade those at the same time, which is, I think, very important. And Roth IRAs? Absolutely. So um, the, you know, Roth IRAs are getting a lot of attention in, in this space on the attitude that, you know, this, if this asset class is going to rise in value the way that everybody keeps talking about optimistically that it's going to do with, you know, we heard earlier with uh, Anthony uh, Scaramucci and, and Michael Saylor talking about a 10x to a 25x uh, return. Um, wouldn't it be cool to have this in a tax-free account, you know, the, the Roth right. IRA? Well, that's certain, you know, I think it's certainly why it's gaining in so much popularity. I mean, a, a Roth IRA with a long-term view on an asset like this is really the ultimate uh, yeah. tax efficient structure. And most uh, RIAs realize that most client assets are in IRA accounts, you know, because most people manage, you know, they create most of their wealth inside 401ks, which at some point or other in their careers get rolled over uh, from 401k to IRA. Uh, and many are doing Roth conversions, et cetera. So uh, the bulk of the assets in this country are inside qualified accounts. So, you know, it kind of makes sense. And that's why we know that so many investors are buying Bitcoin and other digital assets on their own elsewhere. This right. allows the opportunity for the advisor to get engaged uh, in a pretty seamless, uh, easy way that is uh, allows them to incorporate their practice management objectives, uh, just like other assets. Um, so we, we've got a question here uh, from the audience. Uh, the author, right? Question came from the audience. Here's another one that some states, uh, New York, for example, doesn't allow uh, interest to be earned on digital assets. Um, as you're a qualified account, is that an issue? Uh, can you know you, you mentioned briefly the notion of lending? Um, yeah. How does that work? Well, unfortunately, so it unfortunately we as of right now we're we don't uh, service New York individuals because of some of these issues. It's actually not the not as uh, centric around that interest issue. It's actually around the bit license issues that extend beyond just that interest discussion. Uh, if you're cons if you're servicing consumer uh, individuals there, it requires a bit license. So we have uh, stopped the uh, New York uh, at this time, but we're exploring uh, adding it very soon. But it is an issue, you know, and, and I think it's, it's, it's an opportunity for us to come together as an industry to start getting more standard laws across these states. And I think you will see it happen as we mature. It's, it's, it's still a fog. We're still very early. You'll see different states that are going to approach problems to regulating this space very differently. Um, there is a lot of noise right now about around interest bearing uh, crypto. And I, 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 part of me is okay with state with some states taking it a little bit slower than others. I think it's not the end of the world. Uh, we mentioned Roth IRAs, a question came in, what about SEPs and solo 401ks? Yes, all of them, any qualified. So under IRS qualified account types, uh, even HSA, we, we, we are, uh, you can open up any type of account with us for clients. And I'm assuming this question came in as well, but I'm assuming the answer is yes to this, that you will allow a Roth IRA account established for a minor. Yes, yes. 
as long as the miner has earned income, that's correct. The yeah, there's some, you know, we have policy and procedures around that, that as, as a regulated entity of what constitutes that, that our compliance team looks at. But I can tell you that, yes, the, that there has to be some documentation around that. But if the miner uh, has the income, as you said, uh, there's clear guidelines around that and policy and procedures. So, so, so uh, what I tell my clients to do as soon as they have a baby <laughs> is to turn that baby into an actor for baby products uh, and um, let them become a model for TV commercials so that they can earn an income uh, at age zero uh, and put that income into a Roth IRA. So, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, wh whatever it takes. Right. Uh, and um, uh Talk about now the broader picture. Um, you mentioned that you know Kingdom Trust has been around for a couple of decades now, and you began by doing more traditional assets, real estate, gold. Actually, the very first asset, if I'm not mistaken, the reason Kingdom Trust was created was for cows. Mm, that's right. I mean, we start started in the in the in in the the middle middle America firm, and and we were helping people own physical assets cattle, real estate, uh, you know, and that extends into, you know, farming, et cetera. And, you know, broader picture is that alternatives are becoming uh, a bigger part of the financial picture for advisors and for clients. The Bitcoin today is probably the, you know, sexiest, the most headliney alternative that we see right now. The, the point is, you know, we believe that's kind of on brand choice by King and Trust. We want to add as many alternative assets in your pocket, at your desktop that you can, make it as easy to handle as a stock or ETF. Uh, so that's like our vision. And we think that there's a lot of opportunity here over the next 10, 15 years uh, where the intersection of mainstream investing alternatives meet. And that's, that's the goal. So you, uh, is your enthusiasm about that fact, about merging the alternative space with the traditional space, or is your enthusiasm about Bitcoin and digital assets? I, our enthusiasm is around Bitcoin digital assets, to be very clear. And, I think and talk about, about I why. Think, though, what, what's your thesis the, that you see? But I think, so the thesis is, is blended. What, what Bitcoin is doing, yet people wonder why there's so many different coins out there. Bitcoin is spearheading this entire movement of digitalization of finance and of financial assets. Bitcoin being a base monetary asset. What you're going to see as an effect with the technology of Bitcoin and the blockchain behind it is, is forked off into a thousand, 5,000 different uh, types of assets. And now what's happening is that that technology is gonna extend itself into the rest of non-blockchain based assets, alternatives, gold, real estate. And there's gonna be this hazy blend, an intersection for a while of where these two worlds collide. And as, as a company, as a firm, what we're focusing on is making that clear, make, you know, removing the noise of where kind of this, our security token investable here versus that, providing what is regulated, fit for purpose, out of the box, on a screen, available to advisors now. And I think we have an obligation of helping cut through the noise and the, to, to deliver on where the industry is investable in today. But ultimately, the two worlds are going to blend, and we're not going to be able to tell the difference between you know, alternative and physical assets versus, versus digital assets. And I think that's an exciting, exciting time. So do you share the sentiments offered by earlier speakers today uh, from Senator Lummis to Michael Saylor that the price of Bitcoin today is very low relative to where it's going to be in the future? I, I, I don't give financial advice, but I, I, I think that there's Bitcoin's either going to zero or it is going to be several hundred thousand do, uh, dollars per coin. I think it's binary. I don't I don't see a world where it exists uh, at this point in kind of a flat trajectory. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, an, it, it's either or in that case. Uh, and I certainly don't think it's going to zero. I, I okay. think it'll be orders of magnitude larger. I think that uh, it will s bypass gold and its importance uh, and to us in society and the network value uh, will replicate that. And that's where we're going to leave it. Uh with Ryan Radloff, the CEO of Choice by Kingdom Trust. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us on this session. I really appreciate it. Likewise. And we're yeah. next going to go to investing in digital assets via separately managed accounts, SMAs. So we'll see you in the next Zoom room. See you there.